Okay, there's a lot of new diets out there that are probably not new. Carnivore, keto. Some people are like, you're eating too much fat. You're eating too much cholesterol. In this podcast, I want to talk to Dr. Ron Dumar. I'm Nick, the curious patient, by the way. Hello, about, everyone. <laughs> about cholesterol. What is it? Is it good? Is it bad? It's a buzzword that I don't think many people have the time to research or understand. Mm. Yeah, it's just become a bad word, you know. And then we've even heard, oh, there's a good kind and a bad kind. But who tells you how to get the good kind and how to get the bad kind? And the reality is cholesterol is cholesterol. It's fat. It's a fatty tissue that's made by your liver and exists throughout your body in a lot of areas. It's very protective. It's actually quite, um, it's protective for your cardiovascular system. And it makes up a significant portion of your nerves in your brain. I still don't understand HDL, LDL. Do I think about cholesterol in foods and avoid them? Like I was watching something online where I think it's Carnivore MD was saying that we had much more saturated fat in our diet in the 1800s and the 1900s. And now it's vegetable oil that's hurting us. And there's just so much stuff out there that I can't make sense of it. Yeah, so seed oils and vegetable oils are problematic. He's, he's correct in that regard. So what you really want to look for, though, are um, quality fats, uh, such as coconut oil, olive oil, and even nuts and nuts and seeds themselves. So the problem is not so much the seed or the food or the plant that you would be consuming, it's the processing of the oil itself. So it depends, again, I think we have mentioned this a little bit before on some other uh, topics, but the processing that it requires. So if you look at, go YouTube, what does it take to produce canola oil? It's the rapeseed. Canola oil comes from the rapeseed. Okay, so the process that we go through to extract chemically the, the oil from that seed, it's... It's an intense process, and it goes through an incredible amount of chemical processing. So that really is more of the issue where we begin to lose the quality of the fat and the quality of the nutrients that is in that food source. So if you want to consume and get quality fats, you want to consume things like um, olives, or olive oil, because it doesn't take a whole lot to get from the olive to the oil, right? Coconut and coconut oil are actually a similar way. It doesn't take a whole lot of processing. Um, eating avocados themselves on their own is great, right? Um, and then nuts and seeds, soaking them. If you want to have, I would say, pecans and walnuts are what I recommend to my patients, or the foods to consume to have better um, or uh, better amounts of quality fats in your diet. So some people will say, no, we should eat lots of meat. Other people say, stay away from meat, especially red meat. Red meat's taken, um, it's, it's gotten a bad rap. And one of the reasons for it is because of a, a substance called arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid actually increases the inflammatory nature of red meat. And so when we consume it, yeah, it's, it's going to generate more inflammation, more heat in the body. We have to be careful with this idea of good and bad. So this is, I'm getting back to this idea of cholesterol, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. People right now are calling the good cholesterol HDL and the bad cholesterol LDL. What we really need to do is look at what, what's the function and purpose of those materials or those uh, constituents that are made by the liver. So in your cardiovascular system, you will have every now and then little lesions or irritations that will occur. Well, just like anywhere else in the body, we have to heal that. Well, what, what heals that? Cholesterol. Cholesterol in your cardiovascular system is like your scab, you could say, or it's your clotting factor. So it goes in there to help produce um, essentially a fibrin-type activity to heal the cardiovascular wall. 
And so if we have repeated times of injury and then pack in more cholesterol and then injury on top of that and pack in more cholesterol, we can, in certain circumstances, get to a point where we have so much cholesterol and so much healing taking place in the wall of the vessel that it begins to occlude the flow of the blood. Occlude means? Uh, uh, to stop or prevent the flow of the blood, to, to damn it or block it, right? I have so many questions. I still don't understand. Like, I, you, your patients must come in and say, and I heard you there, and I probably need to listen to it again. Your patients probably come in and say, like, how do I reduce my cholesterol, right? Yeah. Can we, can we, I believe you're as expertise filled as you are, and maybe we want to go down that rabbit hole. But you hear what patients ask you. You wanted to do this as a topic. And I still think fatty foods, cholesterol, like, what should I avoid and what is it? And Yeah, so let me tell you one thing that most people, the biggest trigger is triglycerides. Most people will say, okay, I realize triglycerides. If my triglycerides are high, that's a problem. Um, total cholesterol, your total cholesterol is not entirely a problem if it's somewhat elevated, especially if there's a ratio of your HDL to your LDL, right, that is balanced. So if your ratio is balanced, then it's okay. But if your triglycerides are elevated, regardless, that's a problem. So the question then is, what is a triglyceride? And what we're getting to is what's going to elevate my cholesterol or my need for more cholesterol to be produced in the body. Again, cholesterol is a fatty substance made by the liver. That's it. That's what it is. It's a fat molecule. And it's made by the liver. And we have certain sizes like LDL. It's a, it's a low-density lipid. Okay, So it means it's small. We look at that and say it's a smaller particle. Well, if I have an irritant in my, or a laceration or, some, well, not a laceration, a lesion of some sort, like a sore in my vascular system, it's a lot easier for a small particle to drop into that and then to oxidize as opposed to just covering it, okay? So what we want is for it to be covered and then to heal and to bring the other healing tissue into that area and to repair it. But what can happen with a small particle is it can drop inside and then oxidize. And what causes a lesion in the vessel? Is that a blood vessel? Yeah. So is that an artery? Tell me what that is. I love that. So I didn't ever you can have do irritation. Well in these classes. So. You can have irritation, inflammation. Um, generation of heat of some sort, right, that causes a sore or swelling. Like some people, you'd get a canker sore on your on your lip or on your throat or, or on your uh, the roof of your mouth, right? You can get little sores in your vascular system as well. And this comes from uh, exposure to, you could say, exposure to different viruses, bacteria, and it can also come from an imbalance in blood sugar, or an imbalance in pH. Our pH, which is a balance of alkalinity or acid and base in the vascular system, we want to keep that at about a 7.4. And there's a variety of things that attempt to keep our blood functioning at a very, very narrow range. If we get a little too acidic, it's easy to irritate the lining. Well, what are things that make it acidic? Right? What are things that can increase the acidity of our blood or our vascular system? One of the major things is too much sugar. Right? Way, like increased amounts of sugar are super inflammatory for the body. And there are inflammatory foods as well. But high amounts of sugar is one of the biggest culprits that we have in our culture in the United States that contributes to, in my opinion cardiovascular disease, uh, and also diabetes, and also kidney disease, okay? So all of those are, inc are incredibly regulated by the vascular system. One thing that the liver will do, because it's the organ that makes these fatty particles, one thing that it will do is it will take, um, if it detects that there's too much sugar in the blood, it goes, whoa, we have way too much sugar in the blood. So it will grab sugar molecules, it'll collect them from the blood because the blood all runs through the liver, 
each day. It's running through and the liver's processing and cleaning the blood. So what it will do is it will start to take sugar molecules out of the blood and package them into fat molecules. So it will take them and package them in groupings of three. So three is tri, and a fat molecule or a, a sugar molecule is a glyceride. So now we have a triglyceride. So the f- so the liver just created a triglyceride as a means of packaging sugar within a fat molecule to reduce the potential of irritating the lining of the vascular system. So then that's why sugar can cause you to get fat. So yes, there you go. Exactly. So. If you have too much sugar, we often will say, no, it's not fat. It's not consuming fat that makes you fat. It's consuming sugar that makes you fat. So if you have higher amounts of sugar in your body, it's going to be packaged as triglyceride and stored throughout the body for later. And also, this is the type of fat that will package in and around organs sometimes as well. And we can even develop early onset fatty liver disease this way. So cholesterol. Yes. So let's get back to cholesterol. Total cholesterol. We have uh, HDL cholesterol. We have triglycerides, which is a a sugar-based cholesterol, right, to protect the cardiovascular system. Uh, And we have LDL. So our HDL is our high-density lipoprotein. Okay. So it's our high-density or our larger molecule. So if you look at what the HDL does, it acts almost like a a cleaner or a vacuum. It goes out and cleans up debris, and it brings it back, brings things back to the liver for processing. And the that's why it has a lot less likelihood of, say, getting trapped in an area that might have a, a open wound or a sore, because it's much larger, and it's acting more like a vacuum and cleaning things up. So that's why LDL maybe gets more of a bad rap? That's why they call it the bad cholesterol. But remember, all of your cholesterol, your cholesterol in general, is created for a reason. It's created to benefit the cardiovascular system as a protective mechanism, right? And it's also created to help with nerves neurologically. You need cholesterol for proper neurological function in the body. So... Some people who have anxiety, depression, uh, increased levels of stress, right? We can have a dysregulation in our cholesterol levels because of that. Or if we're not eating enough fat, we're not consuming enough fat, we can develop neurological conditions, even mental health-related issues. So it's all connected. Yeah, well, it's definitely all connected, that's for sure. That we can just assume. Um. So, cholesterol. I'm going to go and get my packaged food at the store, which obviously anything in a box that isn't real food, you know, is problematic. Um, And it says cholesterol, this many, whatever, grams and this much percentage. What does that mean? And what should I know about that? Like the cholesterol amount in food. Yeah, so when you're looking about at the cholesterol that's in food and it says yeah, sugars, this many grams, salt, this many grams, right? Cholesterol, this many grams. Really what you're, if you're looking at it has, let me say it this way first. If you ha- are reading a label and it's a package, generally you want to stay away from that anyway, okay? So the cholesterol is going to be a lower quality cholesterol. The cholesterol or the fat that you want to be consuming is something more directly to, uh, field to table, like we talked about before, nuts and seeds, avocados. So, but but then, what do you want to do with cholesterol in a package? Well, honestly, you you probably want to be reducing the amount of cholesterol in a package that you're consuming because, well, it's been through a level of processing that's going to make that cholesterol less beneficial for your body. Right? It's going to it's going to contribute. Um, in a less effective or efficient way because of the processing that it's been through. So let's say I have some ground beef. It's cholesterol in the food and then it becomes cholesterol in the body or does the something create the cholesterol? So what you're eating is, let's just call it fat. That's what you eat, right? And ultimately the body 
develops the cholesterol. So the liver makes the cholesterol. We don't we don't technically eat cholesterol. We eat it as as fat. That's how we should be eating it. So in in the plant, in the uh, you know, in the piece of meat, in the food that you consume, essentially we call it fat. So the fatty molecules are cholesterol. And then cardiovascular disease and heart attacks, I have to imagine those are becoming an increasing health pandemic. They're increasing quite a bit, right? Yes. Yes. So we have the, the cardiovascular disease is the number one concern. Um, it's the leading heart disease is the leading um, cause of death. So what does that mean in terms of what's happening with cholesterol? Can we start there and work backwards? Yeah, so if you look at, there were there was a study, let me say this, because I wanted to address some of this too with regards to stress and whether or not stress impacted cholesterol, uh, especially with this podcast that you run, Nick, which is being well now, and so much of it is based on, hey, um, what can we do now? What, what impact does the way I think, the way I feel, uh, have on my overall health. And so there was a study done on 90,000 individuals, and they evaluated them and their work performance and how they felt at work, and, and then they evaluated their cholesterol levels via, via blood. And what they found was those that reported higher amounts of stress at work also had a higher likelihood of higher levels of cholesterol produced in the body. So this is interesting because higher amounts of cholesterol or higher amounts of stress, and I'm going to take you through a little step here, right? So higher amounts of stress equals increased levels of cortisol regulation or cortisol production in the body. And that that usually increases blood sugar in the blood because the body's trying to get sugar into the blood because we need to be performing and getting things done, right? So if we have higher amounts of sugar in the blood over a period of time, we're going to have a greater susceptibility to inflammation in the cardiovascular system. So now if we have higher amounts of inflammation and irritation in the cardiovascular system, we need to produce higher amounts of cholesterol to try to counteract that. To try to patch or... To heal it. or heal. Yeah, that's what the liver is doing. It's saying, okay, I need, we need to produce more cholesterol. So my first question with why, when I meet with patients and I see that their cholesterol levels are elevated is, why is this patient need, why is this body doing this, right? Not just, hey, you have high cholesterol, so we need to take it down. It's for me, it's saying, okay, why is your body behaving in a way that suggests you have higher amounts of inflammation in your cardiovascular system. And let's start there. Let's go, uh, do you have higher amounts of stress in your work day? Um, are you not exercising enough? Because exercise is going to help your body regulate the stress behaviors, right? It's going to help your body overall uh, detoxify and cleanse and eliminate pro, um, eliminate a lot of toxins that would otherwise be building up and causing more inflammation in the cardiovascular system. So exercise, are we getting enough exercise? Are we doing meditation? Are we doing yoga? Are we doing some form of breath work? Are we meeting with a therapist? Right? These are all things that we could be doing to prevent the initial cascade of inflammation that generates higher amounts of cholesterol production in the body. One thing you said was higher stress leads to more sugar in the body because the in cortisol the blood, levels yeah. are up and the sugar is needed to perform. What happens with the sugar that leads to inflammation? I know you said the body will take the sugar and turn it into cholesterol yeah, so HDL? Yeah, so if the liver, yeah, it it turns it into triglycerides. If the liver detects there's too much sugar in the blood over a period of time, it begins to detect that and pull it out of the blood and package it as a triglyceride. And then that gets packaged out and around the body somewhere as a storage for later. So it says, "Okay, we may need this energy packet later, so we're going to store it somewhere in the body." And then we begin to store all these energy packets for later. 
And with those energy packets, we don't begin to dissolve those the, the fat and then get to the sugar of those energy packets until we actually consume with an, an amount of fasting, which a lot of people, that's a big topic now too, right? Intermittent fasting. But you have to fast for a certain eno- amount of time to where the meal you just finished before, let's say, sleeping, which is a time when most people fast, right? You have to be able to consume enough of the glycogen storage, which essentially is the food that you just ate and the way that, that the liver packages the energy that you just ate and how that's consumed. So you have to be able to consume enough of that meal that you just finished and then get to a point beyond that to where you can start going to your reserves before you start getting rid of those triglycerides. So, what's so that's the deal why with fat for a lot of people is so difficult to lose. So what's the deal with inflammation then? How does so with the sugars, so the sugar is an inflammatory, it's, it's inflammation, it's energy, it's power. So if you think about like a, a fire in general, what, what gives us power? What generates heat? Well, this, the sun is generating heat. Well, we would call it inflammatory. A fire generates heat, we would call it inflammatory. But it also has a utility, a significant amount of utility for us. So just because we say something is inflammatory or something um, generates inflammation doesn't mean it's bad or good. It just means we need to make sure our body is utilizing it appropriately and balancing it appropriately. So if we have too uh, high, if we have a large amount of sugar in the blood, which is are inflammatory, like little fires, over a period of time, our overall, it's more likely that our pH is going to become acidic. It's going to be unbalanced, and so the acidity and the pH can cause lesions or irritations in our body, in our cardiovascular system specifically. Did I take us on a tangent? I, d- I don't think so. I think it's fun. But so are coming back to cholesterol. But really, cholesterol is like, what's elevating the cholesterol? I think the first thing that our audience needs to pay attention to that we can really get our, our hands around is well, our stress, right? Our, our mental outlook on life, our, the way that our body is responding to our environment. And if we can tap in and, and meditate, if we can do some of those, you know, yoga and exercise, um, then we can bring down and mitigate the level of stress that we have on the system, which means that we're going to have a lower amount of sugar being dumped into the bloodstream, which then means that our liver doesn't have to work near as hard to process the sugar and protect the cardiovascular system. And we'll have more adequate amounts of cholesterol. One of the barriers, I think, to getting more exercise is a feeling that as you get older, the body will break down and get you really sore and it might lead to injury. And maybe you overcome that and you try to exercise and then you deal with something that's kind of a nagging injury type bodily issue. So how do you get people exercising in a way that they can sustain if they're like I tried, (laughs) I tried running and like I just felt like my body was breaking down. I ended up spraining my ankle at the the playground with my kids and it hasn't ever felt the same and my knees hurt and everything was just like, man, I used to run in high school and I can't, I can't run anymore. Or maybe it's just not everything just, it doesn't well, feel right. And maybe I, that's my own work to do, but like, I want to get back into running and my body's like, no, I think that's a good question. I think that's a good Cause question. It's free do we, do we, and I can walk out of my house in the morning and do it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. let's do this. I'm going to empower myself. It's like, you know, but the reality is those are those activities that we can do on our own. Um, you know, you could start by doing, especially if you're not exercising at all. Uh, you can start by doing incline push-ups, like against your. And I, when I say push-ups, I don't mean down on the floor. I mean against the countertop, right? So you're you're here on the countertop and you're doing push-ups like this, right? And you start start slow and gentle. Uh, and as we age, that's really what it needs to be. Is it needs to be slow and gentle and manageable. And we need to be listening to our body, right? And we, how, how much can I push my body, right? Or to what point should I push my body to where it doesn't completely put me out for a while, right? I want to feel that burn the next day or the soreness the next day or two. But I don't want to feel like I can't 
move, right? And there are a lot of people who really encourage, no, we're just going to get you, you know, come, I'll be your trainer. We're going to kick your butt. You're going to do this and this and this, and we're just going to keep going and push through. And, and that's, yeah, a lot of injuries are sustained that way, okay? And cholesterol actually plays a role in healing those injuries as well. Really? Mm-hmm. So uh, throughout our body, there is a significant amount of, there's a significant amount of cholesterol that is needed for tissue repair. Anywhere where there's neurological damage, especially cholesterol is needed to heal. So yeah, right? like you've been saying this whole time, but I sometimes say things to be redundant and understand them. That cholesterol that it could be much maligned is there to help our body That That's heal. a ticket. Hopefully people are finding that from what I'm saying, yes. It's a beneficial, cholesterol is a beneficial substance to the body. So if I'm tearing muscles or whatever they say, not tearing, but you know, when you're working out. Yeah, doing micro tear. Yeah, it's uh, when you're trying to create hypertrophy, right, and build, trying to build the muscle and tone the muscle uh, when you're working out. And you need to repair that tissue, right? And sometimes people strain or irritate nerves in the areas too. And it's all of those things require a certain amount of cholesterol for the repair and for the healing. So, there's a, a lot that goes into, you know, the fibrin coming and the amount of, of reducing the blood and the bleeding or the bruising and how significant a tear was. Um, but usually when we work out and we feel that soreness, and people describe it oftentimes as some sort of lactic acid buildup, but it's a soreness nonetheless, and it's really the repair of the immune system that has detected that there's been a breakdown or an injury to the body. And part of the response as far as healing, especially in the cardiovascular system, because that's, um, that's one of the big areas in our culture that we deal with a lot is heart disease. And we've been on this tirade of trying to lower people's cholesterol. Well, what we really need to do is understand why their cholesterol is high. And what we also have in our country is an epidemic and just... A, 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 a horrible case of way too much sugar in our blood, right? And we have higher rates than anywhere else of cardiovascular disease, and we have higher consumption of processed, refined sugars than anywhere else, and we have heart disease, and the cholesterol is designed to be able to heal the cardiovascular system and yet we're not going directly at that source. Like, what's the problem? Well, the problem is change your diet. Stay away from the inflammatory foods. Eat more foods that are going to bring those, to, to help the liver support the cardiovascular system and bring the inflammatory um, nature of your blood down. Well, that's staying away from processed sugars, staying away from the, these Red Bulls and energy drinks and even dyes, when, you're, when your liver is going through and cleaning the blood, when you have different dyes or additives to these drinks or um, the, like aspartame, these fake sugars, these sweeteners, we want to really stay away from those things because they just add to more inflammation because the body sees it more as a toxin, right? Which, the body's like, what is this? This is not... Yeah, it's, it's a... It's some other chemical ingredient that is not entirely recognized by your body. And so it creates an inflammatory response. So give me something. What can I eat? What should I be eating? What should I be consuming? And I'm sure we've all heard this before. This is like get enough sleep, exercise, eat the right foods. But if folks have stuck around this long, give them something to take away in terms of foods. Yeah, I think that's that's good. With, with the number one thing is to eat the quality fats like that we've talked about already on this uh, podcast. But also, um, you want to eat foods that have um, some good dietary fiber, right? So even things like, um, and some people are going to just jump on this, I know, but even beans, peas, lentils, oats, those type of things are beneficial. Now, if you have sensitivity to those foods or so, or other problems, which some of my patients do, and we work around that. But 
those are actually beneficial for helping the digestive system, for helping bile production, right? And for helping things move through the body in a lot, uh, a lot better and more smooth manner. The things you would want to avoid, these are things like alcohol. Alcohol is a sugar. When it turns, it turns directly into a sugar through the processing in the liver. Um, and the liver process it, processes alcohol. And so all drinking alcohol does is increase or spike our sugar. The funny thing is, that's the same thing with breads, pastas, cookies, crackers, cakes, candies. And you think also, think about the quality of oil that might be utilized in a packaged cracker, right? It's like, okay, well, I'm just eating these nice crackers, right? It's like, well, okay. What type of fat might have been utilized in that industrialized cracker complex, right? To get it to your table. The likelihood is the majority of these, um, you know, people can find smarter use of oils in different whole foods places or natural grocers. And, and they do. They have a variety. And thank goodness for those things. But the reality is crackers, cookies, cakes, candies, breads, pastas, all of those things increase the sugar and the inflammation in the cardiovascular system very quickly. So those can lead to higher cholesterol? Those lead to higher cholesterol, yep. higher triglyceride levels even. Right? And let's circle back around what triglycerides are again. Yeah. And those are the ones, that's the level that you want to watch for in terms of concern. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure, and I'll give you an, I'll give you a number, and some of the labs are different, but I like the triglycerides in my patients to be between 35 and 75. Some of you are probably coughing right now because some people have probably never had triglycerides at that level. And the reality is it's probably because you're eating way too much processed foods, breads, pastas, candies, cookies, cakes, sugars. Discipline is something that has to come from the person unless i guess you're joining the military or something like that where can somebody start like how can somebody take the right step today to just get some momentum going because we all know at that mental level momentum is like instrumental in any kind of transformation you got to start building it a little bit and then you get excited and you keep you keep it going it's that snowball little changes right it's it's little changes how to get started uh first just so that people understand, again, what your triglyceride, because you wanted me to point that out. Tri, we all know, is three, and glyceride is sugar. So literally, your triglyceride is three sugars. That's what the word means. And it's wrapped in a fat molecule. That's why it it is considered along your uh, cholesterol panel. So when you have a lipid panel drawn, you're going to have a triglyceride with that, usually. That's why it's with the fat, because it's a fat molecule created by the liver that happens to have three sugar molecules packaged into it as a source of energy to be stored for later. So it's three sugars. That's what a triglyceride is. Now, how do I get started? I think the best place to get started is to manage your stress. I really do. Identify areas that are stressful for you and say, okay, how can I begin to uh, approach my stress? How can I get, begin to regulate my stress? Um, do I need to do some deep breathing? I love to even just do breathing exercises where I listen to my breath. And I'll breathe in nice and slow, and I breathe out nice and slow. And just breathing in, breathing in through your nose creates nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide production in the body will expand and relax your vessels. If you have expanded and relaxed vessels, it's going to reduce your blood pressure because now your heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump the blood through your vessels. So if we have the heart rate start to regulate, then we have the blood pressure start to drop. What we're seeing is a sign that the autonomic nervous system or the stress centers in the body are being regulated. If the stress is regulated in the body, then we're not pumping and dumping a whole bunch of sugar into the cardiovascular system because we're not perceiving everything as a threat. We're not not thinking, okay, we have to perform at high level right now. 
we're recognizing, hey, everything's okay. Everything's fine. Where does the sugar come from that's getting pumped into the system, though? Is it manufactured or? So the what happens is it's like a it's a response by the body, and it's the the cells have sugars in them, and um, the liver and the kidney are working together to make this happen, and that's it's an adre- it's like an adrenal response, and it's coming from your body and your storage to on some level, right? And it will it will pump those sugars directly into the cardiovascular system. So you're asking, is it coming from some storage unit or some some place in the body? Um, no, but what happens is you you have sugar in your body coming in typically at a pretty constant rate, and then if you have higher amounts of stress, what begins to happen is we're just we're keeping that sugar in the blood. And as the sugar continues to drip into the blood, we keep it in the blood and we're not pushing it into the cell directly anymore. So it almost becomes that that sugar, that sugar, it's like an insensitivity issue to some degree. Um, That's what we get to, right? At first, having these spikes, like you can manage it pretty well. And so you, you have this spike of adrenaline, you have, you have to r- rush and perform, and boom, we have this dump of cortisol in the body, and the cortisol tries to get our body to push sugar, as much sugar into the cells as possible. But at some point after doing that over and over and over again, uh, and so repeatedly, the cell becomes somewhat insensitive to it. Okay, We call this insulin resistance. And so... It's a matter of getting that insulin to be able to be sensitive enough to the cell to get the sugar into the cell. And if it's not getting into the cell, then it's just pooling in the bloodstream. But a lot of that is initiated at the beginning by our cortisol levels, by our stress responses. So if, we're, if we need a lot of energy, right, we need to really hurry and take some insulin latch it onto all of this blood, dump it, or the sugar, and then dump that into the cells so we can perform. And I love those descriptions, and I think the simplistic takeaways are there as well. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that's beneficial for people. My takeaway is reduce my stress. Mm -hmm. Remember how important that is to the whole game. Understanding that sugar can be detrimental and lead to the dad bod. And focus on olive oil and butter and animal fat probably to cook foods. Mm -hmm. How's that? I think it's good. Fried, fatty foods, sugary food, like fried foods, right? Usually those are like breaded. Again, think about your breads. Think about your So eat chicken nuggets every day from McDonald's is what you're saying. Those are the foods we want to avoid, yes. Yes, indeed. Okay, um, this is another episode of the Be Well Now podcast. We're available at uh, bewellnow at gmail.com. I already have some more great ideas for the next podcast. I don't think we have any listeners yet, but I hope we look back with posterity as the uh, the legion of listeners oh, yeah. vibe with what you're saying and say, we bootstrapped this thing, we showed up every week, we're making it happen. This is a passion project for us, and I'm Nick the Curious Patient. I have no medical expertise but, man, it's uh, it's always a pleasure to tap into your wisdom, Dr. Ron Dumar. Well, thank you very much, Nick. It's great to be with you, and uh, namaste. Namaste.